Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Subaru Impreza. This is a four-door hatchback with seating for five and this particular trim is the Sport Limited. Fog lights and daytime running lights up front. The hatch has a drag coefficient of 0.32 while the sedan has a drag coefficient of 0.29. MSRP as tested with nearly $3,000 in options comes to $26,885. With the hatchback, plenty of cargo space. You can also fold down the rear seat 60-40 split and then under the floor cover you do have your temporary spare and tools. Okay, let's have a look under the hood. So checking out the engine bay, uh, packaging is fairly tight. You don't have an engine cover, just really this small plastic thing up front. Serviceability, everything looks pretty accessible. You've got your air filter over here with these quick clips to access. You've got your engine oil dipstick right here. Engine oil filter right up on top, very convenient. Engine oil fill, your coolant fill and radiator cap, windshield washer fill. You've got your battery on the driver's side, uh, but up front and very easily accessible. And you've got your fuse box and your brake fluid reservoir. This is a 2-liter boxer 4-cylinder, so the cylinders do lay flat. Dual overhead cams, 4 valves per cylinder with active valve control on both the intake and exhaust. Multi-port fuel injection, aluminum block and heads. 148 horsepower at 6200 RPM and 145 pound-feet of torque at 4200 RPM. So following the path of the intake air, it feeds in up front, passes through the air filter, then heads back to the electronically controlled throttle body, then splits between the four cylinders in this plastic intake manifold distributed between the four of them and then travels back through the exhaust. The exhaust from the four cylinders collect into a single pipe which travels to the rear and then travels through the muffler exiting through a single tailpipe. Power is sent through a CVT transmission to all four wheels. There is also an option for a five-speed manual. At all four corners, 17-inch wheels wrapped in 205 over 50 Yokohama tires. Up front, 10.9 inch ventilated disc brakes. This is matched with a McPherson strut style suspension. On the left, you can see the steering linkage and the anti-roll bar with the drive axle coming in to the right. On the right, you can see the lower control arm and a better view of that drive axle. Everything in here pretty much painted or coated to prevent rust. In the rear, 10.8 inch solid disc brakes. This is matched with a double wishbone style suspension. Coil spring over the shock absorber. You've got your upper control arm here up on top your toe adjustment here on the left, and your lower control arm down below. On the other side, you can get a better view of these coilovers as well as the other portion of the lower control arm and the anti-roll bar. Okay, let's check out the interior. Keyless entry to unlock the vehicle, simply place your hand on the handle. You can also lock it with a button on the outside. Leather seats all around, but they are mechanically adjustable, something that's not all that common on higher trim levels. All right, sitting in the driver's seat, these leather seats have plenty of cushion. They're very comfortable. Uh, they are pretty wide, so for skinnier folks like myself, you know, you can slide around a little bit. Uh, but they are good, comfortable seats, decently soft leather, plenty of leg room. My knees don't contact anything. There's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel column. You've got power windows all around as well as power mirrors. On the left here, you got a few controls. You can turn off the steering responsive fog lights, so they'll kind of turn on lights uh, with the turn that you're going in, uh, and also your stability control, and then you can adjust the brightness of the display. Now the steering wheel, leather wrapped, and you've got a lot of controls on it, which I do like. Uh, you can select through some of the different menus here. You can adjust your volume, use the Bluetooth calling, um, adjust through the settings in here. You've got your adaptive cruise control, which Subaru calls EyeSight, works really well. Really like that, so definitely worth uh, testing out a vehicle with adaptive cruise control. Very good feature. And you also have paddle shifters, which do turn with the wheel. Now looking at your gauges up front, you've got your tack on the left and a speedometer on the right. And then down here on the bottom, you actually have a fuel economy gauge, uh, which is pretty interesting. The thing that's disappointing to me though, is that there isn't a engine coolant temperature, uh, which I would find helpful, especially because there's actually two fuel economy gauges. There's one here and there's one up there as well. Now looking through this display up top, you've got your average fuel economy, uh, your instantaneous fuel economy, uh, how long you've been driving, your average speed for when you've been driving, uh, and then how much fuel uh, you've got left, how many miles until empty. Checking out the infotainment system, actually a really good size screen and the touch controls work really well. One of the other cool things I like about this is you can go in and adjust the equalizer quite a bit. You've got uh, seven different ranges 
of uh, frequencies in which you can adjust this equalizer. So that's pretty cool to be able to do, uh, and the sound system is decent. You've also got your AC controls, your climate control down here, uh, automatic, and you know, simple knobs, they've got a good feel to them, everything very intuitive and easy to use. Now as far as storage space, actually pretty good. You've got this little storage space in the door. You've got these two cup holders right here and a small spot right here, which does work well for a phone. Also a really good, nice deep spot up underneath the climate controls, which I really like. You know, you can fit a wallet or a phone in there really well. Uh, and then you also, of course, have the glove compartment. Now, checking for visibility, pretty much everywhere is really good. Out the front is good, though the front windshield is pretty far away from the driver, you know, the end of it. So if you were to clean the inside or something like that, you know, it's quite a bit of a reach uh, inside. You've got good visibility to the left and to the right, looking out the back really good. You also do have a sunroof in this one and checking your blind spot also good. And keep in mind, you also do have a rear view camera. Okay, sitting in the rear, I've got the front driver's seat adjusted to where I will be driving. And as you can see, you know, there is legroom back here. I'm about 6'1", and I do fit. Uh, it is somewhat limited, though. There are definitely compacts out there, uh, like the Toyota Corolla, which I tested. Definitely had a bit more legroom back here uh, for the rear passengers. You do have... Uh, this fold down here, so armrest and some cup holders, as well as window controls back here. Other than that, pretty basic back here. Now, sitting in the center, uh, pretty constricted in here, so not really much legroom or headroom uh, if you do end up using this middle seat. Okay, let's go for a test drive. Push button start. Now, even though this car doesn't have that much power, the throttle pedal's kind of... Uh, controlled in a manner that makes it seem a little bit peppy so that when you do put your foot down it does rev up pretty quick with the CVT. Um, you know it's not particularly quick when you put your foot down. Uh, the car weighs a little bit over 3,100 pounds and you know with the amount of weight it has and the fact that it's all-wheel drive and you know how little power it has it isn't that quick but the throttle pedal feel is pretty good neither the brake pedal nor the throttle pedal have all that much travel unless you're really putting your foot all the way down uh, the brake pedal fairly sensitive you know you've got a decent range in there uh, and it does seem to modulate pretty well with how much pressure you put down and how much you actually stop. Now the CVT does come with paddle shifter so you can put it over in manual mode uh, and switch between the gears and the gear selections are actually pretty quick and it does seem to work pretty well. The one thing I'll note with the manual gear selection is that also like the Subaru Legacy that I tested is that it does seem to kind of have a little bit of a forward jolt when you upshift. So if you go from third to fourth and you've got your foot down a decent amount, it kind of gives you this forward jolt where it's a little bit strange, uh, not very smooth. And it's interesting because not all of the Subarus I've tested have done that. Uh, the Outback didn't, but the Legacy and this one did. Now, as far as handling and cornering, it actually does seem to stay uh, pretty well controlled pretty flat in the corners. Uh, I don't know if the Sport might have a little bit beefier anti-roll bars in it uh, to attribute to that, uh, but it does seem to stay pretty flat overall. Now, you can also get a manual transmission, uh, but there is a good reason for getting the CVT in this particular model, and that comes down to fuel economy. It is rated three miles per gallon better in both city and highway with the CVT transmission, so it does actually make sense to get it, uh, unlike, you know, with the WRX where the manual transmission actually got better fuel economy and it was cheaper so it can make sense to get the manual you know for something a little bit more fun but the CVT does offer better fuel economy now is it fun to drive uh, you know it could use a little bit more pep to it it's not all that quick but I wouldn't say it's it's bad you know the ride does actually stay pretty flat uh, and you can kind of approach the limit uh, in a controlled fashion so that does give it a decent amount of fun uh, and pleasure in driving it okay so I've completed my fuel economy test course this is approximately 53 miles mostly highway with some city and hills mixed in this vehicle is rated 27 in the city 36 on the highway and as you can see it achieved 41.1 miles per gallon so very impressive fuel economy considering the fact that this is all-wheel drive with the 2.0 liter match with the CVT transmission. Okay, let's get a highway pull in, straighten out, come to a stop, foot down, floats around 3,000 RPM for a bit, you don't really start feeling any torque until about after 4,000. I've got it in automatic mode and there's 60. 
Okay, driving on the highway, I've got the cruise control set at 65. Uh, you do get a decent amount of road noise. You don't hear all that much uh, wind noise, but you definitely do hear the tires. Now, with the adaptive cruise control, one of the things that's interesting is that once you set it, you can set it at any speed you want, 61, 62, but then once you do set it uh, and you decide to increase your speed or decrease your speed, it does it in increments of five miles per hour. So I guess it kind of would be useful if you could do it up by one mile per hour uh, like you can in the other model Subarus which I've tested uh, you can either do one or five depending on how hard you push the button um, so that's just one thing to note is that it's not quite as adjustable as the other ones you'll have to turn it off or cancel it and then reset it at something like 66 or 67 if you want to go up in smaller increments that said the system does work really well and it is great for when you're in traffic it just adjusts your speed for you you set the distance you want to follow the car ahead of you uh, and you just kind of sit back relax and let the car do all of the speed management. Now there are certainly models out there which are capable of getting better fuel economy uh, and also are a little bit lighter if you don't want all-wheel drive and you can get away with two-wheel drive. Uh, if you are looking for a four-wheel drive vehicle this does make a lot of sense. It's very practical and it can get really good fuel economy numbers. So thank you for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below.